If you have more than one cassette deck, no doubt one of them will be your favourite for various reasons. Today I have four decks here and as you may know every single deck will sound slightly different or unique compared to the deck next to it. And this is what I wanted to compare today. Each deck's performance and high frequency output using the same cassette. I will be using the same song and parameters on all the decks themselves and even that is not uh, that easy. First deck has analog VU meters for instance, the other three have LED meters. The second deck uses um, its own unique scale while the other two are pretty close but I wouldn't say identical not identical scales, it is as closely as I could. I've recorded the same song at the same levels on all these decks without using any Dolby noise reduction. With the help of a Spectroid Sound Analyzer app, I'll try to demonstrate what each deck was able to get out of this cassette tape. And yes, you can hear the sound differences out of each deck by ear, even though the difference in sound is not massive. The tape I'm going to use for this comparison is a TDK AD from the very late 80s or the early 1990s. And I think all of these cassette decks will be able to take advantage of the TDK AD characteristics. No noise reduction will be used. The first and the oldest cassette deck in this comparison is an AWA CJ8 AW520 made in Japan in 1976 and it's a first generation front loading deck. And this deck has some clones, two that I know of are the Alpine CJ600 and the Saba 936. I think they all clones of the Alpine CJ600. Decks prior to front loaders were top loaders like a shoebox recorder. This tape deck features manual tape type selectors for type 1, type 2 and type 3 tapes. It has WB and manual level controls. You can't see the cassette in play when it's in the deck so there is a tape run light next to the tape counter. The price of this deck when new in 1976 was 250 Australian dollars. This deck has a kind of a warm sound to it without um, without being too bright, I suppose, that's how you could put it. The second deck in this comparison is an Akamichi BX125, also made in Japan between 1985 and 1987, again with manual tape type selectors that cater for all tape types, type 1, type 2, type 3, as well as type 4, WB and WC, and manual level controls. This deck cost um, 475 US dollars in 1985 when new. And the third deck in this comparison is a Denon DR-M24HX and it's the only three head deck in this comparison. Again, made in Japan in between 1987 and 1988, so just for one year only. It has automatic tape type selection, Dolby B, as well as Dolby C, and HX Pro, as well as manual bias adjustment, and manual level controls, and the tape monitor function as well. The price of this deck when new in 1987 was um, uh, 450 US dollars. 
The fourth and the final deck for this comparison is a Yamaha KX380 made in Malaysia between 1994 and 1996. It has automatic tape type selection, Dolby B and Dolby C as well as HX Pro. It has manual bias adjustment on top of the automatic tape tuning feature and the play trim knob as well and the play trim knob is a bit like the bias adjustment but for playback manual level controls this deck was uh, 250 us dollars when new in 1994 let the experiment begin
conclude this experiment, let's examine the results each deck got out of this cassette tape. This is the frequency response captured by the first and the oldest deck, the AWA. And without dispute, it went up to 16 and a half thousand kilohertz. The rest of the signals to the right of that uh, 16 and a half thousand kilohertz could be just the noise floor. And all decks went down to about 26 hertz and these are outstanding results for a deck of this vintage you would expect these uh, results on a chrome tape and not from a type 1 type cassette tape. this is a frequency response captured by the second deck the Nakamichi BX-125 and a captured sound all the way up to 20,150 kilohertz, which is very good for a two-head deck without uh, manual bias adjustment or any automatic bias adjustment. Having said that, the BX-25 was factory biased for a um, TDK AD from the beginning in the factory. And this would seem the ideal deck for someone who doesn't want to mess around biasing tapes up and so forth and just get excellent results uh, alone by using the deck. This is the frequency response captured by the third deck, the Denon. This deck recorded sounds all the way up to 21,000 kilohertz, which is pretty close uh, to the source. So this deck got the best results so far. In the lower frequencies, this deck also went to 26 hertz, just like the other decks in this comparison. This is a frequency response captured by the last cassette deck in this comparison, the Yamaha. This deck went all the way up to 20,200 kilohertz. Although I have to say that I did mess around with the azimuth of, his, uh, of its head in the beginning. In addition to this, I have to say that I had problems editing this video the video app that I'm using has been begging for an update and um, I haven't updated it so far and I think it's terrorizing me to uh, update it and it's been uncooperative um, in the meantime so apologies for uh, if the editing seems a bit sloppy, but that's the reason. Thanks for watching, and see you next for the previous video.